is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Serious Angler podcast, powered by our friends over at X2 Power Batteries. As always, I'm your host, Bailey Eichbrett, and I would say joined with me, but he's not joined with me yet today. We actually, I don't even know if he's going to make it. We're, we're captainless thus far right now. Andy is actually filming uh, a bunch of Lure Lab shows because we're about to go on a couple week binge here of travel for Red Crest and Classic and Andy's moving houses. And it's like, if you'd seen Andy's calendar, uh, that is why he is stockpiling up on Lure Lab shows for you guys. So he might or might not make it in the show. If you randomly hear Andy's voice pop in, that mean, probably means he's made it in. And hopefully it does because we have a great guest today. We have Josh Shrinko, who's over from the Atchigan brand, as well as the Smalley Talk podcast that I'm a fan of. And I'm sure many of you guys are because you know that we love Smallmouth here on Sears Angler and they're all about Smallmouth. So you probably have run across their platform a time or two if, if you're not an avid listener. But uh, hopefully Andy can make it. Uh, if not, you guys are stuck with me, but at least you get Josh to make this episode way more interesting. Um, but a couple things for you guys before we get Josh into here is right now Bass Fishing Electronics. Uh, obviously, you guys know we announced our partnership with them for 2023. They are running sales on a bunch of Garmin uh, and as well as Lawrence and Humminbird uh, fish finders right now. Just head over to their website. You can see under sale and clearance, they're going to be running uh, a bunch of deals here, especially kicking off the year. Uh, and if you're in the Northeast and you need to, uh, you want to get help getting your stuff rigged, and you want to rig right into their uh, best of completion, Bass Fishing Electronics is the place to go. So look those up. It's actually down in the link in our description, whether you're on YouTube or MP3, you guys can go check those out and uh, head on over and save a buck or two if you're looking to get some new fishing electronics. Uh, and that being said, I actually just put in a big order for Santee Cooper for baits. Uh, it's that time of year for a lot of us folk. You know, if you're not in the South, if you're in the Northeast or the Midwest, uh, it's about that time to start getting on the water. So if you need to get stockpile up on some baits, Omnia Fishing has a great selection. And of course, we have discount codes to help you guys save a lot of money on your entire order. So check that out below as well. Um, but beyond that, guys, if you're going to be at Redcrest, uh, Andy and I are going to be there the entire week. We're going to be filming some shows in person uh, at the launch. Like we're probably going to wait for the guys to get all get on the water. That way there's no like background noise, that type of deal. But uh, we're going to be at the launch watching guys take off Wednesday, Thursday, doing a couple of shows uh, together, which is like the first time Andy and I have ever will ever do a show like in person together. We always are on a computer, even though we live 10 minutes away. So that'll be pretty cool. Look forward to those. And if you're going to be at Redcrest, uh, holler at us. We'll be at the X2 power booth and I'll be floating around from anywhere from, you know, Berkeley Abu to Humminbird, Minn Kota. Well, actually, mm -hmm. Humminbird, Minn Kota is the classic. They won't be there at Redcrest. But uh, regardless, if you're going to be there, uh, let us know come meet up, grab some beers. Uh, regardless, it's going to be a lot of fun. I think without further ado, let's get him on here. Mr. Josh Shrinko. What's going on, man? What's up, Bailey? How's it going, dude? Cannot complain, man. We talked briefly offline that it was like a Monday on a Thursday, but uh, at least we're here now. We get to talk fishing and relax for a little bit. Yeah, dude, I'm, uh, I'm taking the day off tomorrow to do a little early spring hiking trip so i'm i'm feeling good it's basically friday for me right now so uh yeah it's it feels good to not have to not have to work so yeah man um yeah thanks for having me on yeah of course dude uh i have i, I will say it's kind of like a friday i guess for me I, I do have to work probably a half day tomorrow but i'm gonna be on the two bucks podcast which is like a new outdoor marketing podcast which is pretty cool. Uh, once that's out, I'll, I'll put it up on social for you guys. If, if anyone listening wants to go listen to me for whatever reason, talk on that show, but, uh, something cool, man, dude, the first time I think, yeah, it's the first time I ever get, I've ever been invited to do it. I'm going to go speak at one of our local high schools through the local, uh, high school. Oh, that's school. awesome, dude. Yeah. 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 Very cool. cool. They have a, they have a bass fishing club. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, uh, it's, um, Canisius uh, high school and they, one of our friends who's actually, uh, is one of Andy's avid guide clients uh, who goes fishing, you know, buys trips with Andy all the time. He uh, runs a fishing club out of Canisius High School. So he asked me to go in there and you got kids from that, like just getting into fishing to kids that only know what carp are like to kids that bass fish on the daily. So it's going to be a cool wide range and talking like industry stuff, podcast, kayak fishing, that whole thing. And, It'll be interesting yeah. kind of test the waters of what they're going to want to hear about yeah dude i mean i wish 
we had a bass fishing club in when I was in high school because uh, I was basically the kid that was like I worked at a tackle shop through high school and like me and my buddy would get up and you know fish before school at like five in the morning and then you know be late to first period like that was the kid I was but we didn't have any sort of you know any sort of bass fishing club so it was it was all unofficial um, but we were definitely known as the the bass fishermen, you know, in high school. So, yeah, so, yeah. I'm right there with you, man. Even in the college, like I, I didn't have that either growing up. We didn't have high school teams. We didn't have, you know, obviously couch fishing. There weren't teams in New York at the time when I was going through it. Um, my route into bass fishing was thankfully just because my grandfather and my father fished all the time, hunted all the time. Yep. That was the reason I became an outdoorsman because like there was nothing – influence wise in school to help you steer that direction which i yeah. still like I, I feel like that needs to be something because i mean who especially these days you know when, when more kids need to be getting outside but like we just had hank parker on our tuesday night live this past week he was probably one of the biggest reasons that really like pushed me hard towards bass fishing because like my dad and i would watch tv shows on the weekends and uh you know the bass yeah. master reruns uh like that was the stuff that got me hooked and Man, I don't. It, it, there really wasn't a lot of influence when it comes to like, at least for the north, the us north easterners, like, there yeah. isn't much up this way. Yeah, we definitely had. I, so for you know, just your audience's information, I'm out of Indiana, so I live about 20 minutes south of Indianapolis. Um, in Midwest, like we have like hunting and fishing culture around here is pretty big. You know, you got wheeler and guys like that that came out of here mm -hmm. um so it's like definitely people take it seriously and de there's definitely a lot of like i would say more hunting than fishing um you know like yeah. where i'm from it was like big time you know white tail hunting that's like what everybody's into it's what i think of uh, indiana is white tail uh, yeah dude i mean yeah and i i used to hunt archery and shotgun and it just you know, I, I don't have enough time for that anymore. I need to sell my bow because I got a thousand dollar bow sent up there and I need to get rid of. But um, yeah, but, uh, it, you know, I, I do think fishing is something that as, you know, the industry's kind of, you know, expanded and grown and it's gone more of like a grassroots uh, sort of um, route and the college thing started you know you got guys like jordan lee and that that came out of the college ranks mm -hmm. and um you know the high school thing is just kind of the next progression of it but i mean i would have had i i was thinking the other day i was like man if i even just had a fishing kayak when i was super young like i would have had so much freaking fun um because we were fishing off the bank and stuff you know like and you can only do so much when you're doing that um but yeah man it's a it's, it's cool to, to see that kind of grow. I mean, you guys are, you cover a lot of aspects of the sport. So I, I was telling you, I've been listening to your podcast, been binging on it a little bit because I drive a lot for my job. And I was like, man, I need to get into the whole pro fishing sort of thing. I was watching the Seminole today um, because I used to do that and I just kind of got away from it, but it's, it's pretty fun. It's definitely better than like, watching like pro baseball or pro pro basketball oh yeah so. yeah 100 <laughs> percent, yeah. dude. <laughs> yeah yeah so. i definitely need to get get into it a little bit more they need to make a netflix documentary on uh one of these trails that that would be the key to get get people kind of interested in it but yeah um, they gotta like find some loop into how to really spark a storyline there because it's it's certainly interesting especially like the history of bass i feel like you could do it on and I'm mm, sure yeah. there's something in the works. It's more like trying to convince people. Like if you if you brought the different personalities of like of Ray Scott and then like oh, yeah. Hank Parker and like your Rick Cluns and you could go all the way as crazy as like you have your Matt Robertson's today's age where it's mm -hmm. like the truth behind bass fishing or something like that. Like it could be kind of pretty interesting. And it would honestly, I think to your point, like those are the main streams now that everyone's on like you look at the big shows like yellowstone and the damn mm -hmm. Dahmer series crap that ever people are obsessed with for whatever reason like that's like that's like where everyone goes now like beyond like a youtube or an instagram that type of deal or twitter like that's where everybody usually 
flocks to from a media standpoint. Not that it really is media, but yeah, they had. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but they had a um, an F one like Formula One racing documentary on Netflix. It was kind of like an ongoing series, and then they had they just uh, uh, brought out a golf one for the PGA Tour. And it's just like a really well done documentary. And I don't follow golf and I don't follow Formula One, but I watch those and it introduces the character of the drivers and the character of the golfers. And it really that's what you know, when you introduce the human element and you get people interested in like who those guys are and what they're about, what their families are. That's the kind of thing that draws people in, because otherwise it's just a dude on a screen, you know, doing something that they don't know anything about, um, you know, and I've. My thing is like, dude, if you can make golf interesting, like you could definitely make fishing interesting. Um, so it, you need some money to do that. So we'll, well, and we'll dude, see. And dude, think about like a lot of our guys are like a lot of the anglers on the pro series, whether it's MLF, Bass, NPFL, you could count in now. Like a, a majority of them, I'll say, are like your Alabamas, your Texas, your – you know, you have a decent chunk from Oklahoma and you, you have a lot of like that Minnesota, Michigan, some Northern in them, but a lot of the guys are from the South or, and a lot of them, honestly, they, they take pride in calling themselves a redneck and think yeah. of how many, how many Netflix and Hulu series are I mean, There's duck dynasty. There's oh yeah. Moonshot. People love there's that people stuff. Love dude. It. Dude, there, it's, we're, it's right red, there. Rednecks. Rednecks are just like, you know, they're like wild animals in a zoo, dude. People, <laughs> people, people, you know, sophisticated people look at them. They're like, oh, man, this, this, these are wild. <laughs> so, yeah, it would make for a good TV show. There's definitely some characters on the tour. I mean, it used to just be like Ike and Ellie, you know, guys like that. But there's there's a few like really interesting dudes. I was watching it today. I was like, man, I don't know any of these guys. Like, I need to. But there's so many different trails now. It's like it's hard to figure out like what's the major trail i know mlf and bass is kind of like your two main ones but Mm -hmm. you know somewhat split but but yeah man it's cool it's a neat thing i'm your podcast kind of pushed me to get into that a little bit more and i've been listening to you and yeah i've been digesting a little bit more that i still am not gonna fish for largemouth because i freaking hate largemouth so still (laughs) still small mouth only guy (laughs) but there's plenty of that so yeah dude that's something i wanted to get into and i meant to ask you way earlier because everybody that's new to the show we always like want to know the roots like how you got in the bass fishing in the first place so that's that's part a of my first question to you is one how you got your start into bass fishing in the first place you know who got you into it and then two i want to know about this hatred for largemouth when did this stem (laughs) yeah that's funny (laughs) so uh what you know, got me into largemouth. It sounds like pretty similar path to you, man. My dad uh, started fishing when he was like a young adult. He was kind of like rough, had a rough upbringing and bass fishing sort of like saved him is what, you know, he kind of claims. And he was like, just like dove in head first and not really in tournaments back then. It was when the tournaments, you know, it was in the kind of late seventies, like early eighties when tournaments are just kind of getting traction and, um, but he just fell in love with bass fishing in general. I actually got, you know, growing up around that dude, when I was like seven years old, he would take me on the water for like 13 hours. I mean, we were just like, it was like baptism by fire, dude. I was like, you either are going to love this or you're going to hate it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I remember like when I was young, uh, you know, thinking like, man, I'll never be able to catch as much fish as my dad. Like he would just scorch me, dude. He, no mercy. He'd be up there just crushing them. And I'm in the back deck and you know, figuring out how to work certain lures. And, um, so that was sort of what molded me into a fisherman. And we didn't fish for smallmouth at all, really. Like it was all reservoir fishing, largemouth type stuff out of a fiberglass, you know, bass boat. And then, um, I got, I actually pushed my dad to get into tournaments because I was like, you know, kid, you're just like, man, let's, let's go do some tournaments. So, yeah, um, yeah. So we started fishing a couple series. There was like a Christian based series called fishers of men. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Yeah. Um, yeah I feel like that's but, like one of the biggest trails in the country right now. Yeah. Like so it was just getting started. So we ended up fishing like their Indiana kind of series and it was a team tournament. That was what 
kind of made it attractive for us because I could fish with my dad and it was like, you know, two guys, you know, two man team. And, you know, we, we want, ended up winning a couple of those and going to their national championship and stuff, kind of doing that. And then, you know, for me, um, as so many guys will probably tell you, like I met a girl and, you know, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I met a girl who's now my wife and, you know, I went through a period of time where I just didn't fish a lot. Um, I had an aluminum, like a bass tracker that I fished tournaments out of and stuff. And I sold it cause it was just collecting dust and yeah, man. And then, uh, not too long after that, I kind of, um, my, a buddy of mine had got this little dinky jet boat with a little tiller outboard on it and took me out, um, on the river for a smallmouth dude. And I, it was like, we had a freaking day. Like I caught a 21 and a half, which is still tied for my personal best length smallmouth that day. And, uh, cool. that, yeah, it was like, this was about 15 years ago. And dude, it was like one of those days where just like, all right, dude, this is what I'm doing now. Um, and I just, from then on, I kind of just fell in love with smallmouth and where I'm from, there's really not a lot of, reservoir or lake smallmouth it's mostly rivers um and so that's just kind of where the smallmouth are where in indiana that's just all in rivers so i you know bought a kayak to kind of get out there and you know that one thing led to another and yeah dude 15 years later i'm freaking completely obsessed with smallmouth so um yeah and hey i don't actually hate largemouth so let's get it i don't hate largemouth <laughs> It's just a stick of mine, you know? It's like, I'm, I got to be the smallmouth guy. So if I'm the smallmouth guy, I'm going to talk shit about largemouth. So that's, that's right. just, <laughs> um, well, they don't fight as hard, though, dude. Nobody's yeah. going to, nobody's going to argue that. <laughs> I know what don't do that. Yeah. Well, perfect timing. Uh, my good buddy here, seated to my, well, so if you people are watching to my right, uh, our guy that's obsessed with smallmouth, not that I'm not, but <clears> our smallie <throat> guy here, Mr. Andy Full, has made his appearance. Up, He's man? here. Thanks for allowing me to join late. I uh, double turn your volume up a little bit. Oh, sorry, I uh, I double scheduled myself tonight and was recording a lure lab episode. And I was like, dang, that went a little bit longer than I expected it to. But it will be a good episode here in the future. But I do agree with you. I love largemouth fishing. Smallmouth are great because I guide for them like a hundred days a year. But I do have like a soft spot in my heart to go and catching big green heads. Cause they're just dumb at times. And I love that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dumb. Nothing's but, dumber than a river small mouth. Though. Yes. I, I was going to yeah. say like, <laughs> if I had my choice between like a big fat, lazy lake small mouth or a pelagic small mouth, that's like in our finger lakes and where there's not as much current, but they roam more and chase bait fish or a river small mouth. I'm 100% all the time going to chase a river smallmouth because they're just way more aggressive. They will eat top water and spinner eat baits. Everything. And they, they're just, <laughs> they're just crazy. Dude. So, so Josh and I, Andy, uh, offline here before we started the show, we were talking about the Hobie BOS and the Susquehanna river that we both fished last year. And yeah. I remember going to awards that, that, uh, Sunday evening and I caught basically, well, I should say I got bit on everything. The only fish I landed were on spinner baits. And I remember talking with Christine Fish Christine Fisher at the time, because she was like, Yeah, I was throwing a wacky rig at rocks and stuff. And I'm like, I was throwing top one or a spinner bait. Like, why sounds like yeah. hell throwing a, a, a wacky rig in the river? Yeah, and, like I mean, she she crushed me, so I'm not gonna argue it, but still at the same point in time, I'm sitting there like, man. I feel like I had way more fun than a bunch of these people. <laughs> yeah, dude, if you're hitting them on freaking spinner baits, dude, that's that's one of the best best bites you can have in a river, man. Cover a lot of water. Yeah. That's for sure. Spinner yeah. baits, the mini max chatter bait has become like a favorite river smallmouth Stop bait of mine. Talking about it, dude. Sorry. Everybody's. I got some of those. Everybody has been like, yeah, it's not a secret bait, like, dude. Don't be, it doesn't oh, matter. People know about surprised. that crap. Yeah. Yeah. There's some people that don't know about it yet. And and there's some other like smaller chatterbait style vibrated jigs that are really cool. Like Mega Bass makes a really cool like small broken down one. I can't remember what it's called. I have one of them, but it really thumps hard in like current situations, and it's a little bit more compact. And you can mm -hmm. get a lot of bites on those too. 
I gotta look that yeah, up. I just remember sitting talking. there at awards and I was talking to people and they're like, Yeah, man, I didn't even think about throwing a spinner bait. And I'm like, who doesn't think of throwing a spinner bait in a river? Like, I feel like that's the first thing I, I think of. <laughs> I, I threw a spinner bait some when I was there. Uh, dude, it was like I think there was more so in that tournament, at least what I this is what I took. It was like it was location more than it was anything because like if you weren't in the places that had the right depth had the right substrate like the the big fish just weren't there um and that's what i like that last day i end up fishing in the right spot and i was like oh yeah well this is where they're at so and the water dude was so low i mean you would go like a mile like there was just no water um yeah. and yeah it was yeah. really low last year yeah it was crazy low uh it was fun though dude that's like a i feel like that place every time i've been has been just an adventure like, it's just like, it's so big and there's so many different types of stuff around. You're just like, man, like there could be fish anywhere around here. Whereas in a river, most of the time, like a small river, you kind of like, oh yeah, they're probably going to be right here. They're probably going to be right here. There's just so, it's like sensory overload on that river. But Yeah. Well, so here's what I want to get into as well. Like, so would you claim yourself then as like a river junkie? Like you like that small flow yeah. of water? I'm definitely in probably more so like I was explaining. It's just that's where smallmouth are where I live. Right. If there were smallmouth lakes, I would probably fish them just as equally. But like in in a two hour radius, like there's not one lake with any sort of population of smallmouth from where I live. It's all rivers. So that's where like, you know, a kayak was like the natural thing for me to get. And then now, you know, I probably jet boat about. Sixty uh, percent of the time, and then I have like a a rat. Like our podcast is sponsored by uh, a, like a Smithfly type of company. Um, they make a little like drift draft. So we use like depending on what size of river we're we're on, we do that. But yeah, I'm like probably ninety percent river fishing. So okay, because I have I have a bunch of questions when okay, it comes sure. to the river. So I know how to read current, right? I, I know how to you know tell like. When there's pools, when it's slack water, that type of deal. Like, I think reading the current is not the hard part. It's more of understanding how the different components of that current set up for their different parts of the year. Where, like, this is this is where some of my ob observations from last year. And one of the coolest observations was you wouldn't have to make a cast, and you could see where the fish was when the fish were when the river was so low because they were waking yeah. their backs out of the water, basically. Yeah, it was um, wild. So. I would catch fish. My bigger fish came when there was a boulder and you have a pool of water behind it of that's like not moving. Obviously, right. There's no current. It's a place for them. To, it's the eddy. But then you have the current on in front of the rock that's hitting that rock. That's where I was right. catching all my bigger fish were in front of it. Yeah. One, one, I'm curious why. Like, is it, do you think there's a reason for that? So when you look at like a, a, a boulder and you know it's funny you say that like all the times i've been in the susquehanna like the 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 push water or like the front of like current breaks were where i've caught fish um you know reason why I, i've talked about this with a few guys and like you guys will probably know what i mean like ultimately we don't even ever know why fish do what they do right like <laughs> we can like give educated guesses and you're like oh it's hilarious how guys are like oh yeah the fish were doing this like dude you don't like fish are dumb like <laughs> especially bass like sometimes like, it's like everything's purely instinctual with them and sometimes dude you're just like what the hell like I'd, i have no idea why they're doing this my guess on that is like when you look at a rock in the river and you have kind of current going around it. Um, you obviously have the slack water behind it. Right. Um, but when they are actively feeding, they're using that current as like a conveyor belt. So like all the little, like, you know, crawfish or bait fish or whatever they're feeding on in that river, they're getting kind of washed around the front side of that rock and around, you know, the sides. And I think those guys, they sit in that slack water sort of as like a, like they don't have to expend energy. So they're kind of sitting. I've found they actually, when you catch them on the front of the rock, they're actually underneath the rock. And I've walked up to those rocks and like kicked them like just to see. And dude, 
almost every time, even if I haven't caught a fish, like there's always big fish that will shoot out from under it. So there's always fish under those big kind of like boulders that stick out. You're like, oh man, that's probably got fish. Now where they're eating at, yeah, a lot of times, dude, for whatever reason, they eat on the front side of the rock. And I think that probably has something to do with the, which way the forage is kind of flushing around that rock. Um, whereas like if you fish, I think the natural thing for a fisherman to do is go around the back side of it and fish it, but they're facing upstream cause they're like looking for that stuff kind of washing downstream. So a lot of times if you, if you're fishing behind them, they don't even see you. Um, mm -hmm. so I found the exact same thing on the Susquehanna with those grass islands, like the tips of them. Dude, that river, I don't know how many times you've been there or whatever, but that river is 1,000% an hour before dark river, like in the summertime. Like an hour before dark, like if it gets dark at, you know, 9 o'clock from 8 to 9, dude, it is lights out. And I figured that out, like I was there for like a week, a couple years ago with uh, uh, Juan Verut. I don't know if you guys know Juan, but he's okay. like a guy, he's a kayak guide out there. Okay. And he hosted all of us. We we're on the wilderness systems team. And um, dude, he's like, dude, we'll quit fishing at like noon and just go out there at like six. And he's like, just trust me. This is, the and dude, it was nuts. Like, I mean, I'm talking like you fish all day and you'll get like two or three 18s, like, you know, just kind of like pretty slow fishing. You go out there from like seven to nine, and you had like 20 fish over 18 inches. It was wild. And they were all at the front sides of those grass islands. And it was like at seven o'clock, all of a sudden you started seeing shad just skipping everywhere, dude, at the front side. And you just float as fast as you could to each, the front of the island. Did you you'd crush like two or three 18s? Go to the next one, two or three 18s, next one, two, three, 18. I mean, it was like crazy. Um, that's a little bit in depth for your question, but I don't know if that, you know. I, I, yeah. I actually thoroughly enjoy that. Can I get a little bit more like scientific on it, if you don't mind? For sure, dude. So I kind of drew a picture as you're talking. What happens with a boulder? This is your boulder right here. When the water is running Can over it. That? I drew it. Don't mind me. When, as water <laughs> runs past your boulder, the fish will sit. Oh, I got to find my picture here. So as the water's rushing <laughs> over the boulder, don't mind me. So the water comes past the boulder, right? Like it's running by. They'll sit in the front side of the boulder because as the water hits it, it actually creates a soft pocket in front of that boulder. So as yeah. bait gets sucked through the current, the bait will actually sit in the front of the boulder before it gets flushed behind in like a cycle circle. And there's a hole underneath the boulder as you're talking about. It's actually a prime feeding area for the biggest fish to live because they're the strongest ones that are able to live in that little bit stronger current. And then you'll catch your smaller ones behind just picking up the scraps. See, I've, I've heard of that. Uh, and I've acknowledged that like on the St. Lawrence river, when you have big shoals, that type of deal, because it's, it's very prevalent, but I wasn't sure if that applied to like one single three by three foot boulder out in the, in the Susquehanna River. Like I wasn't oh, sure. Oh yeah, dude. Applied, if it, if there's like, gravel and you have like undercuts on it, like you have to think of it almost like an undercut bank. You have a big yeah. boulder and you have gravel and prime bottom composition. It's going to wash out somewhere on that boulder and where it's washed out slightly, that's right where that fish is going to lay. That's wild to me. Like, yeah, mid-river boulders are like, dude, that's like big fish freaking magnets. And the, the problem with the Susquehanna is just a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and this is the other part of the Susquehanna that made absolute no sense to me. Uh, and I'd really like tried to figure it out. And I still don't understand it besides this, the fact that these bigger fish were like ghosts. And <laughs> like, cause we were talking offline and I told you day two, there was about three fish over 19 inches that I lost like that. Like those painful, painful, painful lost fish type of deal. Um, and so there is a section of rapids where it's like you have boulder, 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 boulder everywhere. And you're like, you're casting at all of the, the eddies and the fronts of the rocks. And you're catching like fish here and they're like 15s, 18s. But then there was like a hundred yard section. That's like just three foot of water, no boulders. It's just pebble ground, absolute nothing. And it was just one of those things in practice where I'm like, ah, I'll cast while I float down. You know, I was eating a snack type of deal. 
just like burning a chapo and had a giant blow up on it miss it made another cast giant blow up on it miss it so i'm like oh okay i didn't think much of it uh and, and then went there on term day and lost all of my big ones there but there's nothing there like i tried to figure out what it could have been i know exactly where you're fishing dude i guarantee you it's the same spot that i'm thinking we'll, of we'll that i ended up at this and i'll send yeah. it to you <laughs> but like it made no sense to me i'm like why here why not up at the rapids why not on the boulders like they're in the middle of nothing and i'd throw spinner baits cheddar baits and stuff wouldn't touch it they'd only touch the top water and they'd come off every single time and i'm just sitting there i'm like these are like ghosts they're just here to haunt me like this is all it is there's two reasons know. why i think they would have been there one it's a if it's right below like a rapid section it's an easy spot for them to rest but you're in the dead of summer, there could be an underwater spring there too, where the water temp was just slightly cooler and they felt more safe and relaxed because that's slightly cooler water temp in river systems. That's huge. Especially when the water starts getting 70, 75, 80 well, degrees. Well, how do you yeah, know this like, for the spring? How do you, how do you know that? Like you got to jump it and lay on the bottom, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you you know, practice the only really down yeah. Just <laughs> jump in and lay and get in the bottom and you'll feel the water temp change. So this wasn't the same spot um, that I'm going to refer to here, but I did find a spring that Andy, that's really interesting. You said yeah. that um, I found a spring and you know, what was wild, dude. I got to this spot. It, it was a I, Christine Fisher and Guillermo was like, they were like pre-fishing and they were, I, I had been go, kind of working my way upstream and they were floating down and we kind of intersected at this spot. And I saw, dude, I'm not, it's the only time I've ever seen this. There was like 10 muskies all in this one spot. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, there's musky everywhere. I'm like, what? I've never seen this. And I've also never seen, like, there was like two 20 inch smallmouth literally on the tail of one of these muskies. And I was like, well, something's weird here. Like, why are these all? Because I had a follow from one of those musky. I was throwing a spinnerbait or something. And, it, you know, it kind of scared me. I was like, holy crap, that's a big freaking fish. Well, I marked that spot because I was like, oh, I might go back there. This is you know, during practice. But I called Jeff Little because I was talking to him about because he knows that you know, air, you know, that river, like the back of his hand. And I was like, dude, what's up with the spot? And that's the first thing he's like, oh yeah, that's uh he's like, that's a spring. He's like, it's so low right now that in the water's like baking hot, all yeah. those musky want to go to that clean water. So they're like, you know, they want that 10 degree drop or whatever. And that's exactly what it was. Now I didn't catch any smallmouth there, unfortunately. Now but, the, the cool wow. thing about springs are, in the winter time when the water is higher, you can go back to those same areas where you find those springs and the water temp will actually be slightly warmer. Mm-hmm. So like right now, the water temp is probably 34, 35 degrees. But if you find yeah. a spring, it's going to be 38, 39, 40. And that's where you're going to catch all your biggest smallmouth in the winter because they will actively feed there because the water is almost to the right temp for them to feed. That or you go to a um sewer discharge yeah. and it's really warm <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the other, that is the little other. trick a little trick for winter fishing there yeah. for river winter fishing you find a warm water discharge from a water treatment plant it's gonna have freaking stack fish so, so, <laughs> so josh to give you a little bit of background on myself and how i've learned how to river fish i'm actually a, like a diehard steelhead fisherman from like november oh, cool. to we'll call it beginning of April. And I've learned all of my river and smallmouth stuff from basically figuring out where steelhead lay for once the water okay. time start dropping. Cause when the steelhead move out of our creeks, the smallmouth will move in and at the same time and they will literally yeah. live in the same exact spots that the steelhead did. And yeah. Like, that's cool, man. Steelhead are freaking awesome fish. They're amazing fish. <laughs> they're, um, yeah. they're, they're something. I can't get yeah. Bailey to go, but there's something. <laughs> yeah, I've never caught one before, but we have a couple rivers, kind of the same thing. They're like steelhead in the wintertime, you know, summertime. I don't know if you guys saw the – I caught a xanthistic smallmouth, an orange smallmouth. Did you I guys did see that? that? Yeah, I saw good. that one, yeah. 
Yeah, so that was sort of like I was on the local news and in all kinds of magazines and stuff. And that river that I caught that in is one of those rivers. It's it's connected to Lake Michigan, and they have steelhead and kings and everything runs up there. But during the summertime, it's like stacked with smallmouth, and there's smallmouth everywhere in it. So, yeah, it's awesome. cool. Yeah, it's a neat so river. For for the people listening. Say again what you called that smallmouth, and then also how does that happen? If you know, so it was it had a condition called xanthism. I call it a xanthistic smallmouth, but essentially it was a, um, it's like a genetic. I don't know if you call it a disorder or a genetic mutation, um, similar to like an albino is like more what we're familiar with, like you see an albino fish or albino deer or whatever, yep. but instead of like losing all the color in its pig skin pigments it uh changes the color to yellow and in a small mouth because they're naturally brown like yellow and brown like this was like the perfect mix like it i've seen other xanthistic small mouth like it's really rare but like this one was like one of those small mouth that like didn't have any spots it was like pure brown but it turned it like this like super like bright orange color it i mean dude it was as close to a goldfish like if you look at the pictures i did not put a filter i did not edit them like it was exactly how it looked and i caught i caught on a buzz bait a little finesse buzz bait and uh i'm like reeling this thing up my brother i was in my jet boat and i opened the front and my brother was in the back i was like what the hell is this dude you know, like <laughs> I pulled up and I was come up and eat a buzz bait dude. Yeah, like, <laughs> I know. And I'm like, I'm thinking like, like I was saying that river has all kinds of other species in it. So I'm like, man, this has got to be some trout that I'm not aware of or some like weird salmon or I, I had no idea. And dude, I got it up. I'm like, that's a freaking smallmouth, dude. That's and wild. yeah, we start. I took picture and a video of it and threw it back. And I kind of was like. I guarantee you when I post this, like this is going to like go viral because this is, I've never, you know, I've been smallmouth fishing for, you know, over a decade. I've never seen one of these before. Um, not, not that look like that anyways. Um, it was cool though, man. It was a neat, now I'm like the orange smallmouth guy and I can't shake that. Every time I meet somebody, I'm like, dude, you caught that orange smallmouth. And I'm like, yeah, well, I've caught a lot of other smallmouth too, <laughs> but, You're but yeah, it, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, I guess it's good to be known for that uh, than nothing. But you know, do you? Uh, uh, have you guys ever seen the movie Role Models? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Do you know at the end when they're doing like the the, the reenactment? LARPing. The LARPing. Yeah, LARPing. yeah. When they're LARPing. like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do do you, so like the way you, the, the the I still can't pronounce the damn thing. What what do you call it with the bass? LARP. No, oh, no, no. Fantastic. Oh, do you guys remember their name? Kiss of my <laughs> That's all I thought I of when you said that. <laughs> when you said that, I'm like, that's the first thing that popped in my mind. It's a good movie. <laughs> a good movie. Don't watch it with your kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely not. Very Emmy old. will not be allowed to watch that until she's about 18, so no worries. <laughs> until you're like 30. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good stuff. Well, well dude, uh, so one of the things I want to talk about, obviously for anybody that doesn't know or was un- wasn't aware but needs to know is you have two really cool endeavors one with the atchigan brand which is freaking sick apparel especially that's small mouth geared sorry for you large mouth folk there, there there's nothing there for you <laughs> uh, but then also the smally talk podcast so talk a little bit on those those two deal two deals and how those all started yeah man um honestly uh it was kind of one of those things for me. Uh, I'm an, a little bit of just an entrepreneur. Like um, I own my own, my day job is a, I own a medical device company and that's like what I do. And I like, it was like, I hate selling medical stuff. So I want to do something, you know, kind of fun. So, you know, my brain kind of goes towards like, you know, and you guys have probably talked about this, but like building your own brand right? Just like, and for me, I felt like one of the easy things to do was start a podcast. And this is, you know, we're in our fifth season now. Um, so this is when podcasts, had, you know, 
when Serial, if you guys listen to Serial, it was like the, one of the first like big podcasts that came out. Everybody was listening to Serial. It's like a true crime podcast. And my buddy's like, dude, you need to listen to this. I'm like, I don't even know what a podcast is, but cool, dude. Send me a link. And that was before Apple even had a podcast app. And I started to listen to it. And I'm like, I drove a lot. I was like, dude, podcasts are the shit because I can listen to, I can consume this media while I'm driving. And it's like basically a radio show. And uh, I was like, I need to, you know, get in on this. So I, I started personally was like starving for fishing content. And I was like, there was just like nothing good out there, like from a fishing standpoint and specifically small mouth. Like I couldn't find anything. Like there's like Orvis had, I remember they had like one episode on small mouth or something like the Orvis yeah. podcast. I'm like, dude, this sucks. Like, and then I was like, my natural just personality is like, dude, I'll just do it myself. And so my kind of good fishing buddy that um, he's an attorney here in Indianapolis and, uh, we go fishing all the time. And I was like, dude, we should start a podcast on smallmouth because we were both like hardcore smallmouth guys. And he was like, yeah, dude. So we started that. And it, you know, I think first we actually started a blog, which is this hat quest for 23. If you guys have seen this around, this is kind of a sub brand for a Chigan is like, um, it started as a blog where we're kind of our like goal, like, we're not, you know, I was explaining before the podcast, I'm not really like a huge tournament guy. I do fish, you know, about a dozen terms here. Most of them are local, um, but I'm consider myself like a trophy hunter at heart. And for me, our like lifetime goals, catching a 23 inch river smallmouth. And so we started blogging about it and then very quickly realized that I hated typing up blogs and podcasts were way more fun. So we, yeah, started a smally talk and yeah rest is history man like we've um you know we got a little bit of a cult following with that and we got like you know guys it's a very unique audience um with that uh they call themselves the wet boys if you guys hear that term <laughs> which is it, 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 it's yeah it's the root and the term wet boy is Probably not. It's another you don't want to like talk to your kids about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, we we basically just, you know, s- sort of I wish we had taken it more seriously because we only put out episodes like, you know, sometimes once a month. It's very like infrequent. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things. Dude, we just that my co-host is like one of the funniest guys I've ever met. And it's a lot of humor, a lot of sophomoric humor. Um but we just, you know, try to just like keep it on brand. You know, we're just like smallmouth guys. We talk about smallmouth. We have smallmouth guides on, which Andy, I would love to have you on sometime if you're sure. consider yourself like a smallmouth specialty guide. We're we're building out a smally talk um, guide network. So we're we're identifying guys who kind of specialize in smallmouth throughout the country and like uh, building a database for people because we get tons of guys that like. Hey, you know, do you guys know anybody in this part of the country or whatever? Um, we have nobody we know in New York, so that would be a great. So um, one great of your, one of my really good friends and clients literally rocks your gear every time he comes on the boat. <laughs> okay, Ryan, awesome. Ryan Dahl. Oh, dude, Ryan Dahl is the freaking man. Yeah, he is. Yeah. The, he uh he usually comes up once a year with me, and he'll go out for a couple days, and we'll we just. He just, yeah, that dude can fish. Dude, he's a hammer. Yeah. So, <laughs> he's a freaking hammer. So, uh, Bailey and I live here in Buffalo, New York. My home base is Lake Erie on Buffalo. So, that I guide for smallmouth probably 95% of the time. And then in the, was it October through April, I'm steelhead smallmouth guiding. And once the boat goes away, I'm full steelhead. And then I do sprinkle in largemouth trips because I got to chase money too. Really? Like I have to make money. So, but there yeah, are, yeah. I, there are periods of time where smallmouth fishing gets tough, like July and August, where if my client wants to go largemouth fishing, I won't say no. Cause we might be able to catch 30, 40 fish as opposed to yeah. five or seven smallmouth in the lake. So, yeah, yeah, for sure, dude. Um, well, we'll definitely have you on at some point. Cause we have, have guys on from all over the country and but yeah that's kind of what smally talk is man it's like you know a cool it's a 
a little bit of a like uh we don't take ourselves too seriously um we have fun with it it's you know i think it could be more you guys i always go on podcasts like this and i'm like damn dude i could be doing so much more with this podcast you guys got you guys we have one like title sponsor but like it's very just not taken very seriously um but yeah i mean and, and that is really what kind of pushed me to do the to go into the apparel thing and which i i hate using the term apparel because i don't want it to be like at, at some point it's not going to be an apparel brand but that's just like the path of least resistance for starting like an outdoor kind of brand company like a lifestyle brand yeah yeah that's just like the easiest way to make stuff and sell um I, we have a lot of plans for the next like our three to five year kind of outlook is we're gonna do a lot more stuff um but that brand is essentially an extension of the podcast like we're our tagline is the official brand of smallmouth bass a chigan um which I know you weren't pronouncing it like that, Bailey, but dude, I don't even know how you're supposed to pronounce that. So that's just what we say. Achigan, <laughs> Achigan, oh, Achigan, yeah, whatever, dude. That's my uh, bad. I've always thought it was Achigan. No, no. I yeah, I know. It. You know, it, it's whatever you want to call it, um, honestly. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that that word, that term, so Achigan is Algonquin for smallmouth bass. So that word... That's is what the Algonquins used for smallmouth, and it it's 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 Ojibwe, which is like a the native tongue of Algonquins. Um, so it translates into one which fights, which is kind of a cool. Dude, that's like what's yeah. That's I mean, I it, my neighbor is one of my business partners. I moved in my new house about three years ago and got him, dude. He fell head over heels in love with smallmouth fishing, and he's a He's the head of uh, wildlife and nature preserves here in Indiana. He works for the DNR, and that's pretty cool. Was, neighbor. Yeah, yeah, it was it was fate, dude. It, and he can draw like he's like an artist. So it was like this. All these things kind of came together. Um, but yeah, me, myself, him, and then my brother in law, who's also he did my tattoo here. If you guys can see it, um, he's yeah, like dude. a yeah. He's an amazing artist. So I'm like, hey, you guys, I've been wanting to do this kind of business venture and kind of take this podcast type of thing and turn it more into like a like a long term like plan to make a career out of it. And um, yeah, we kind of went into it. And like I said, we started out with apparel and all of our stuff is like based off of smallmouth. Um, we try to be creative, um, sometimes a little edgy with our stuff. Um, and then uh, sort of that's we're about 18 months into that venture. Um, so that the first kind of thing outside of apparel we did was Smalley games, which I think that is what we is sort of like we're talking about. Um, and that was like one of those things for me as a guy who I'm not a great, I'm not a big tournament fisherman. I do fish them. Like I realized most of the guys that listen to our podcast, they're like, they're trophy chasers. Like they go out for fun. They go out to rivers like they're searching for as many 20 inches as they can get. And but those guys still like competition. You know, they still like and and I realized I'm like, man, there's nothing out there for those guys. Like they catch a fish, they take a picture, they put it on Instagram. And it's like great. But like there's nothing to kind of scratch the itch of like, hey, let's like work towards something. That's let's, let's like keep track of our catches. Let's let's like have like a some fun with it. And that's where I was like, dude, why don't we do this board game that we essentially like um, keep track of trophy catches throughout the season. And you can sort of have a, you know, like the video game culture where you level up, like everybody, I'm sure you guys have played call of duty and that, where you like get the badges and all that stuff. That's sort of what I try to create with the small games. And we're second season in, so we're still kind of figuring it out, but it's essentially like you catch fish through the season you upload them to our the pictures on, of them to our website. We judge them and we assign, we give you a game piece, and then you sort of try to fill up your game board all season and beat the game. And if you do, you're considered a bronze master, um, and you're kind of in like this exclusive club of dudes who are dedicated to smallmouth. And uh, we had ten of them last year, and we've it's a cool dude. I got a like a private 
chat going with all those guys and dude it's it's pretty freaking cool like does a boat it, count like can i get in I'm oh yeah boat. oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. boats count <laughs> you would crush all of us in 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 rivers um yeah so we have this year we have more guys that kind of found out about it and started playing and i'm kind of like dude this is good this is gonna test the limits of the difficulty of this game because you know if you're like in a river you know around here like you know, you go out and you'll catch like two or three 18s a day, you know, if it's a good day, you know, some of those, like you go to freaking Erie, dude, you're, you can catch like, you could catch like 50 18s in a day. Like it's you got to come crazy. up here in June, like the second and third week of June. And there okay. are days that we can catch a hundred over 18 inches. <laughs> well, uh, I will definitely be coming up. <laughs> like, uh, like yeah, dude. May and June is the silly time. It's kind of redundant and weird because you're out dragging like Ned rigs and swim baits in 40 foot of water for you get pre spawn, post spawn, and spawners out deep. But it's uh, you can blow everyone out of the card in the game. In Dude, one <laughs> I would love to come up there, but yeah, we have no we have no restrictions as far as how you can fish other than it's artificial only. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so we don't do any sort of live bait. Um, but other I, than that, like we throw shiners. Yeah, yeah. Shiners and crabs all the time. <laughs> you, you know, guys would be fishing with shiners and crawfish and stuff if we let them. Um, and we from only. Yeah, our <laughs> exactly our. I mean, our tagline on the podcast is "Free the Fighter." So, like, we're all about catch and release. And like, if you fish with live bait, reality of it is like you're killing a lot of fish. Yeah. Like they're choking it and you know i so we we try you know people would do that if they want that's just not part of the games yeah um and this year we kind of have like some cool things where certain spaces on the game board like you have to catch to, in order to fill those spaces you have to catch them with certain types of lures mm -hmm. so we're kind of caught you know helping people like branch out and fish different types of stuff so we have like a rodent category so you got to catch a fish on a small mouth on a rodent bait um you know which for some people might be kind of hard you know um so you're yeah about, so, uh, like a spro rat type of deal like yeah so anything we're pretty liberal with the like you know longer hunt spider yeah so we do have a bug we have a terrestrial category we have a rodent category we have a bait fish category we have a, a aquatic invertebrates category which is like crawfish and stuff that's pretty easy and then we have an amphibian category so, like, all oh, those classes now. of lures, you got to kind of like to fill. And there's five spaces of each of those categories. So you essentially got to catch five fish on a rodent bait, five fish on a some kind of frog or salamander bait, five fish on a bait fish. You know, so it's to beat the game. Um, it does. It's kind of force you to get out of your comfort zone a little bit. Um, force you to fish stuff you wouldn't normally fish. And that's this year's game. Like I said, is the second year. So we're still figuring out what works and what people like and what they don't like. And, yeah. you know, I try to make it harder this year. It's definitely harder to beat this year, but it's, I don't want to make it so hard that people feel like they can't beat it. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, it's just fun, dude. I, we had, we had 15,000 some inches of smallmouth turned in last year um, during the games. Yeah. And it was cool, dude. It was cool seeing all the pictures come in and blew my mind. It's like, no 23s not yeah. one um 22 old freaking fish too yeah. like if you can catch one yeah oh in a river that's a 20 year old fish probably yeah like yeah dude that's like i mean it's the holy grail yeah you know i think i've even in a lake ever. i mean yeah, in a lake one ever i've gotten a few like 22 and three quarter to seven eight but i think i've caught one over 23 and it was this past June, and it was a post spawn six nine. Like, Whew, buddy, yeah. post spawn six nine. That's yeah. nuts. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you catch a twenty three in our game, there's we only ordered like nine stickers for the game pieces on the twenty threes. But if you catch a twenty three, it's like the, it's like the um, like complete like in ending piece. It like you, you skip man. like yeah, you skip half the board if you get the 23 so you still have to play some of the game but if you if you get to 23 you like skip it like it's like this shortcut that goes all the way through 
the board. So, yeah, we'll see, man. I mean, I've seen very, very few legitimate 23s. Like, when I started that Quest for 23 thing, everybody and their brother was, you know, oh, I caught a 23 in 1996 on this river. And, like, I'm like, okay, dude, whatever. Um, what you measure it with, your calf? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I didn't have my measuring board that day. Or, like, I lost the picture. But there has been about five dudes that have sent me pictures that were like, yep, that's a 23. And most of them came from like the new river. That's like almost exclusively out there. Dude. Okay. Are you, you going to do that event this year? I'm considering it. Yeah. The, I had a bad experience the last two times with the new river, dude. I was like, I went in the summertime and it was not good. Not <laughs> and good as in re regards to fishing or off lot the water? Of dinks, dude. A lot of dinks. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just okay. I've heard yeah. that it, like the neighbor, like the people there. Oh no, I that was fine. Like it was honestly one of those things. I mean, it's a beautiful place, but like this is the way I view the New River is like the the upper end, like the biggest of the biggest fish are like about as big, bigger than any river in the United States. But like overall fish population, there's just not. It's not like the Susquehanna where there's like an abundance of. 18s and 17s and 19s like it's like the fish are either like 21 22 inches or like 12 and you know i'd for me if i'm gonna travel you know seven eight hours to go fish an event like i want to enjoy the practice i want to enjoy like the whole experience like i'm not the tournament's kind of secondary to like the fun fishing whereas like if i can go up to minnesota dude like I can for crush it all all weekend, yeah. you know, Minnesota. So it's like for me, it's I don't know. We'll see. It's a cool river. It's a historic river. It's the oldest river, supposedly the second oldest river in, on Earth or something like that. Really? Um, that is. Yep. It's supposedly so next to like some whatever the Nile, I think, is the oldest. That is the second ri oldest river on Earth. And you can tell when you go there, dude, it's like, holy shit, man. There's like. You can be waiting one second and then there's like, you know, a 12 foot hole with like current ripping through it right in front. It's like, it's pretty dangerous. A lot of class threes, um, which in a kayak, dude, you got to like, <laughs> I mean, when you have gear, like, you know, we all carry, what, you know, three or four grand worth of gear with us. Like, I don't want to like yeah, lose my I'm gear. I'm thinking like camera gear, man. Like, yeah, weird. it's... It, yeah, I had to portage some rapids like the last time I went. And I don't, you know, that depends on where you go. But like I got a book that was like the river guide um, and it kind of mapped out like, oh, this river. They have rapids that are named, if that tells you anything. Yeah. <laughs> so like, oh, yeah, like this is water rafting river, isn't it? Like that's oh, like yeah. white water rafting in West Virginia and stuff. Yeah, so they, yeah, they like whitewater it. raft down in the gorge. Yeah. Like. The lower part, you. I don't think you. There's probably a small mouth in there, but that's not where the tournament's going to take place. Um, but the part where you fish, dude, like there's. I'm telling you, Bailey, dude, you'll see. Like if you go there, you're going to be I like, shouldn't have the PA14 now. <laughs> well, I mean, there's spots, dude, where you go through, and you're like, I'm not taking my kayak through there. No way, I'm. The, I'm not going. No way, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Whereas, like that raft I have, we had the you can take that thing through anything. Like you can take that thing through like class. We, I haven't taken it through class five, but we had somebody take it through your class five. You can go through about yeah, kayak. Those is a different story. I've dumped my kayak before in class three. So, you know, I don't, I don't want to lose. Yeah, my gear. Class three, class threes are about where you want to stop messing around yeah. and actually know what you're doing. Yeah, they, dude. Yeah. You know, man, if you're in steelhead rivers, like there's, you know, you get some white water and like some class threes, they're not all created equal. Some of them are like you, they look scary, but you go through them and it's like, that wasn't so bad. But there's other ones where there's like ex huge boulders and stuff you have to kind of navigate through. And those you get pinned against one of those boulders, dude, and it just, it'll just flip you, dump all your gear. And like, yeah, like there was a couple of those on the new river that I was like, we just drug around them um, and it was fine. But you, you needed to understand that, like, when you got to those places, you needed to not go through them. Mm -hmm. um, 
So and we you had can tell too, the elevation change from the top to bottom is kind of crazy when you start getting above class two rapids because some oh. will be like 10, 15 foot elevation drops. Yeah, like waterfalls. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's that's what you, you know, in reality, if you like would watch a video of yourself doing it, you're probably like, oh, that was, well, that didn't look near as cool as what <laughs> I thought it was. But, you know, you go to some of those places where it's like, it feels like um, like there's no way you would ever go through that in a kayak, like not with fishing gear. I took my gear out of on one of them. I took all my gear out and I was in a ride 115 wilderness system at the time, which is kind of like like that's like if you're going to use a fishing kayak to go through rapids, that's like what you want. You know, it's kind of like meant for that sort of thing. And uh when, it, when I got out of the one that I went through, like my entire kayak was filled with water. Like it was like I was hitting stuff with my nose and just like a wall of water to come over. And like I didn't flip it, but yeah. yeah. I think that's the most dangerous part is like once you start getting about those class two rapids, you get a lot of like white water rollers in them. Yeah. And if you have your nose going through it, and I know nothing about kayaking, right? But like I know from watching videos and drift boats and being on drift boats and rafts that like if you come in there wrong, even on a drift boat that's sitting six, seven foot over the water, like if it, when oh, you yeah. come through those rollers wrong, you'll we'll still get water over the bow. Yeah. Which is crazy to think about. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> You're like, what? Yeah, for sure. I'm trying to get a second kayak just for that event this year. <laughs> <laughs> I have that Hobie uh, inflatable, dude. I freaking love that thing. I I've never, yeah, I, yeah, I bought that. Like, is I have so many people popped them at the Susky. So I got a bunch of holes in mine, but I never got any that were big enough to like stop me from keep to keep fishing. But dude, I got a solution to that. So we won't. We don't need to get into that right now. But. I, yeah. Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, no, I got uh, – yeah, it, I have I have a system where I can patch stuff on the river no problem in like 10 minutes. So if it ever does get a hole in it, like Harshman got that hole in his, um, I can patch it on the side of the river no problem, keep fishing. Whereas last year I was kind of like – I thought I could patch it, but I figured out why it wasn't working. Um, but, yeah, we I'll tell you about it. Because I saw you had pictures of one. I don't know if you actually had one or if you were just testing Yeah, I, I borrowed it. So I work with Morgan Marine up here in Cuca Lake in New York. And uh, he mm -hmm. let me borrow it for that Susky event. Just because PA-14, uh, what we were doing, was not going to work. Uh, yeah. So like, which is actually kind of wild to think, like that a kayak's too big for a certain. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's crazy. Thought, but, um, I think it's yeah, like a go-kart though, right? That, yeah. That, dude, that's crazy. Maneuverable. It's wild. It is cool. Yeah um yeah. yeah so dude uh I, I feel like we could go on and on and on we're gonna have to do another smally talk serious angler collab here uh coming yeah down for the sure man but, uh yeah did andy do you have anything for josh here before we let him go at this moment i just want to say thanks for allowing me to hop in like 20 minutes <laughs> in I, I apologize that i was late but josh it was really good meeting you I, uh, Same, I wish you utmost success with all of your fishing endeavors that you're doing and keep rocking it out. I loved all the content you guys. I don't know why I wasn't following you. I'll be like, I won't even lie. Like I thought I was because I always look at your page, but apparently I wasn't following you, but I am now. So yeah. Same, well, same with me, was, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad yeah, I learned it was I, a chicken and not yeah, a chicken. Because I've always been calling it a chicken for years. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's a very like Indiana pronunciation. So I don't know if that's how the Algonquin said it, but we're just rolling <laughs> with that. Uh, we had to pick something, but yeah, dude, same same to you guys. You, you guys podcast is freaking sick. And I was telling Bailey before you get on here, Andy, that like you guys have kind of like I've been binging on the last you know couple weeks, and you guys uh, have a really cool platform. It's got me into stuff that's like rekindling my love for like competitive fishing and stuff that I watched growing up and very, very cool, super like, um, entertaining. It's not a lot of fishing podcasts out there, dude, let's be honest. They're just like snooze fests, yeah. you know, like there's a lot of them out there that just like, it's really hard to listen to and they're just dry and your guys is, is super entertaining. Um, 
So, man, hopefully I was able to create an entertaining episode for you guys on your, your feed. Yeah, so. yeah. We appreciate yeah. it. If you're game, dude, we're going to have you back on for sure. And we got something coming down the pipe later this year uh, that we'll love to have you on a bunch. But we got to get you yeah, dude. involved. Got to hit got him on the show as well. That'd be cool. Yeah, man. Um, if anybody wants to check out our stuff, it's uh, a Chigan brand. So, a c h i g a n brand dot com. That's For anybody our, struggling uh... like me, I'll have it linked down below. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then Smalley Talk. We're not on YouTube, which is probably a mistake on our part. But um, you know, we're on Apple, Spotify, Google, all those audio only platforms. I do not want my ugly face posted on video every week. So, um, you know, we keep it audio only. Uh, Buddy, but we, they have to deal with this. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all fishermen are Stop. ugly, dude. We all have beards. We're all, yeah, we're, we're not, we didn't get where we got in life from looks. So, bad yeah, vibes um, and beards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then at Ch- Smaller Games, if you guys want to sign up for it, it's on the Cheegan website. Uh, you can, it started on March 1st. So, we're only, this is the second day of it. Um, you can sign up anytime throughout the season. No issues. Um, you know, I'll go ahead and throw a uh, – is this going to air tomorrow? Yep. Okay. We'll do um, – uh, let's do a discount code for your listeners, largemouth suck. We'll do largemouth suck. <laughs> um, 15% off of Smalley Games if you guys want to participate. Oh, so cool. so. Yeah. Is that one word? One word, yeah, large mouth. One word, large mouth suck. Yep. Lowercase. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's doesn't not matter. cap sensitive. So yeah. That's hilarious. Oh. Large mouth. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right, so for folks listening or watching later, all of this is in the show notes for you guys. So if you're driving and you're listening, and want to get involved, you can go back, go in the show notes, and I'll put the uh, Achigan website, social, Smalley Talk links, all that stuff, uh, especially small Smalley games. I'll put that down in the show notes for you guys. That way you can go and click on it because if you're anything like me, uh, you probably heard that and you're like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And then you take five minutes down the road and you forget everything. So I'll guilty. Be <laughs> but, uh, dude, heck yeah. I'm excited to do the, the smaller games this year. That's going to be fun. Yeah, dude. Yeah. You guys have some good, good water up there in New York. So I'm much better than Indiana. Um, so yeah. Well, dude, uh, I was telling Andy a couple months ago that obviously we you know, we live with Lake Erie and Lake Ontario in our backyard, two of the smallmouth meccas of the world. And uh, we also have some really sneaky rivers and creeks that nobody fishes. Uh, oh, yeah. like, smallmouth in them. Yeah. And that was oh, like my yeah. childhood, like yeah. more not from the kayak end, but like my brother and I or my buddies and I take our bikes. We go on summer days and go walk the creeks for a whole day and catch, you know, smallmouth and uh, my plan is with the my personal YouTube channel, Be the Fish, is go get like that eye trek or like a lynx and go explore a bunch of these backwater creeks in the summer when some of our summer fishing sucks and uh, create yep. a whole series out of it. So that smaller games will fit into that perfectly. Yeah, dude, for sure. It's a, it's a lot of fun. It'll take you back to your roots. So that's right. Heck so, yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks dude, guys. Um, I almost forgot, Andy. This was actually almost really oh, the bad. last question. Last question, yeah. Oh, so man. we can't let you go just yet. We got our last question of the night, which if you've listened to the show, you definitely know it's coming. Uh, and that is if you could sit down with any three individuals, whether they are currently alive or alive thousand years ago, maybe they were the Algonquian, you know, anybody of your <laughs> of your choosing. Uh, <laughs> have a steak, have a beer, and uh, pick their brain. Who are you gonna invite? Ooh, damn. This is a hard one. Uh, I just heard Hank Parker answer this uh, this afternoon. So he was planning. He knew. He's like, oh, man, and, uh, I'm coming on here. I got to have this answer ready. And it's probably already escaped your brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I honestly didn't even th- I wasn't even thinking about I'm going to have to answer that question uh, when I yeah I was listening to this. So totally unprepared. Um, so I would say the first guy is a guy we actually had on our podcast. Uh, his name's Tim Holschlag. I don't know if you guys have heard of him, yeah. but he's like, he wrote, uh, he's an author. He's written the best smallmouth book on the face of the planet. It's, um, it's, well, he has two of them, but one of them's like Creek Smallmouth, one of them's River Smallmouth Fishing. And it is, it changed the game for me. Um, if you haven't checked his book out, but he passed away about, 
uh, after he was on our show, about a year after he was on our show. So that dude would be one of them. He was super cool guy. Um, um, shoot, man, probably Bill Dance, uh, just because I grew up watching him so much. And he was supposed to be in, on our podcast. I had him booked and everything and had a heart attack. Yeah. And he couldn't oh. come on. So that I need to get him on our podcast. But he's like one of those guys that like just iconic – fishing like i just you know the tennessee hat you always grew up seeing you know his blooper reels and dude's just a living legend and then probably i would say kevin van dam just because he's the goat um and you know i he's he's from michigan so he knows all about smallmouth and that dude would probably like a wealth of knowledge there's probably other people i'm not thinking of because i would really value like a a guy like johnny morris you know, like who is more of like on the business end of things. Cause that's kind of the way my brain works a little bit, but yeah. KVD, Bill Dance, Tim Holscher. Like that's a good trio. So we can roll with that. Yeah. I like that a lot. Well, dude, uh, seriously appreciate you taking time out. Uh, this is not going to be the last time you're on this show. Uh, we're going to cool. schedule a bunch of stuff coming up. And then uh, obviously, like I mentioned later in the year, which, we keep hinting at with folks. It's probably annoying some people that we keep hinting and just not getting yeah, every episode at this point. Actual hint. <laughs> I'm excited about it. If, if I can't get it off my mind. Uh, but yeah, you're gonna have to wait another couple months, folks. Sorry. Uh, but for real, dude, uh, appreciate you coming on uh, and talking yeah. river small mouth. That is like the one thing that I love doing, but probably know the least about when it comes to small mouth and large mouth. Like you get me out on a lake and I can find you small mouth, get me on a river and like, I'll catch them, but I don't know why I'm catching them. <laughs> I'm just yeah. casting and getting lucky. Shows you how hard it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, for real, cool. dude. Uh, appreciate it. And uh, man, we'll be talking to you soon. Yeah. You guys have fun at Red Crest, man. It'll be a blast. Thanks. Josh. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. We'll be talking to you. Yeah. Every night. Dude. We need to do some more river smallmouth fishing. Like not so, like Niagara River smallmouth. No, no, fishing. no, no, that no, no. So where I'm moving in a couple of weeks, there's a creek like eight hey, minutes. Hey, don't give it away. Ten minutes from my house. <laughs> eight it, minutes. Thirty minutes, I meant. <laughs> well, literally every creek, they get the big Great Lake smallies that run up them in the spring, and you can catch like a six pounder walking in the creek. It doesn't happen often, but a lot of like three to four pound, 15, 18 inch fish. I was going to say, what is the reality of this? Because if it's anything like how Andy talks about lakes is when Andy says you can catch a six pounder on it, normal people like me, they talk in natural occurrences. Like, yeah, you can go there, catch a good amount of fish and four pounders. Andy's like, well, one time in 1986, I caught a six pounder. I was, so you can listen, catch a six pounder listen. I wasn't even born in 1986, all right? Like, I know I'm, like, 10 years older than you, but come on. Like, Back when I was 12, I caught a six-pounder in Honeyway. So there's you can catch six-pounders there. I haven't caught one in 20 years, but they're there. So I haven't I haven't tried to go after the smallmouth in these creeks in oh, probably, funny. like, six or seven years. But, like, when we would do it, we would steelhead fish for them, like, on a float with, like, a little black hair jig, and you just sit there and – twitch jig and it would get so silly at points where you can make a cast close your eyes count to three and just blind set the hook and have like a four and a half pound small yacht like for 10 casts in a row you see i ain't gonna do that i'm bringing like a spinner bait and top oh. water and i'm gonna force feed them i don't care if they're 12 inches oh that's where the last time i did it, i actually walked the creek with like a three inch kai tech key tech kai tech how are you supposed to say it easy shiner and just slow rolled it through these pools and just boom. like you would go through five six seven packs of them in like two hours because well, they would just come on throw a rage swimmer yeah well, <laughs> whatever it's all i had on me at the time and it was probably four or five years ago is the last time i did because then i had a boat so i'm like i'm just gonna go on my boat so wait a second did you say key tech key tech key tech however is that how you pronounce it, it? I think it's technically. I've, I've key always said Kai Tech. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be Key Tech. So if that's the case, then I've pronounced two things wrong in this episode. Yeah, it happens. I said Achigan, which is a Chigan, and then Key Tech, but it's Kai Tech. Like I'm pretty sure it's Kai Tech, but Kai Tech. Talking like a Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> My Timmy Orton's is showing. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh. Uh.
Oh, that's amazing. And we only do that because we have Canadian buddies. We literally, fun fact for the viewers, 12% of the show's demographic is Canadians. Thank you, you snowbirds up there in the Great White North. You guys <laughs> and ladies, if there's ladies. We got nothing else to do. They're Canada, snowed in. True, true. <laughs> but thank you for tuning in and listening to our knucklehead selves talk about fishing multiple times I mean, a week. We're practically Quite impressive. Part Canadian. Yeah, it's fair enough. Like, I mean, Buffalo is about as close to Canada as you're going to get. Maybe maybe <laughs> Niagara <laughs> Falls. Niagara Falls might be like slightly closer just from like a pure geographical standpoint. But um, yeah, we're about as close. As Niagara you're Falls be. is like 10 minutes away. Yeah, but like I'm talking about like Buffalo across to Fort Erie might be like three miles. Niagara Falls to Niagara Falls, Ontario, you could probably throw almost throw a stone across. It's like a quarter of a mile. Yeah, so we're technically <laughs> Canadian, is what you're saying. He is pretty much <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, dude, this is a lot of fun. Uh, I know for some folks, you guys were expecting to get Chris Lane on today's ep- uh, episode. We had to push that back a little bit. That's going to be next week. Uh, we're going to do that. We're going to preview Redcrest a little bit with Chris. Can we get um, a lot of him when he's like, pow, pow? <laughs> Maybe that'll be our ending. Pow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we'll see if we can get on. I feel weird asking, be like, "Hey, Chris, do you mind doing a pow for us?" <laughs> how like your pow chant when you boat flip in like a eight pounder? <laughs> yeah, I just want you to channel your your inner eight pounder. Yeah, give me a pow, would you? No, was, I love it. We're gonna have Chris. I think the tentative plan uh, for this week is we're gonna have Chris on. We're gonna put that show out on Tuesday. I think we're gonna do a Tuesday morning show. For you guys and then obviously business from the bass boats monday uh we're gonna have chris lane tuesday morning that's when the episode will air there will not not be a tuesday night live uh and then andy and i will obviously be at red crest we have tyler rivet uh that we're filming with next week that i think we're going to push back to the week following red crest for you guys uh leading up to the classic um and then so what we're gonna do is next wednesday Andy and I are going to be doing an in-person episode at the launch at Red Crest. We're probably going to be, you know, kind of waiting around for once the guys launch, start getting on their way. That's when we'll start doing things that way. We're not trying to talk while there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in the background. Um, You know, like getting you guys noise where it's a little bit easy for you to listen. But if you're watching on YouTube, you can at least see the guys, you know, in the background. We're launching. You can see the lake, uh, given if the conditions aren't too crappy which it's not looking too likely right now if not it'll be the hopefully like the red crest expo or if not we'll just do it in the hotel that we're staying at figure it out yeah we yeah regardless deal, we'll have a at, at present you know present live at the red crest on wednesday we'll have a so i'll have a show for you guys at wednesday it won't be the normal time it'll probably be like an 11 a.m or noon maybe a 10 uh, I take that back. It would probably be like an 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. upload for you guys. So a little bit later than usual. We'll have a Thursday episode, and we'll also have a Friday episode. So you're going to have – that's four episodes next week. That's a whole week of serious episodes coming at you. It is. It is. So what we're going to try to do is get anglers on for these. So the guys that aren't fishing Red Crest or if we're able to – you see if we work something out, uh, whoever's there, like Steve Barden's going to be there. He's a biologist. You guys love him, especially for those that listen to the show a lot. Um, so we're going to try to get him on as well as what we're going to be able to do is take those shows, put them in the next week. We're going to have one live show in between Red Crest and the classic week. We'll have a live show, Tyler Rivet show, and then we'll get dive into the Bassmaster classic, which I think we'll do. Uh, we'll have our fantasy fishing show coming up for that for you guys um, is the week of the classic that Monday we will have our fantasy fishing show for the classic, um, which again, if you guys are going to be at Redcrest or Classic, hit us up. We're going to be at X2 Power Boost for both of them. Um, but obviously, uh, if you guys see, you know, Pure Fishing or Johnson Outdoors at Redcrest, I keep saying Johnson Outdoors. Johnson Outdoors is going to be at the Classic. Um, that's where I'll be floating around as well as X2 Power. But uh, some cool shows coming up is what the gist we're trying to get at. We have the remote set up finally going. A couple busy uh, weeks. Yeah, maybe we'll bother our good old buddy, Mr. Jeff Queen, and do a live on the water podcast with Jeff one of the nights while we go fishing uh, not on Lake Norman, obviously, but uh, one of the nearby lakes. Well, either way, we'll figure it out. A lot of cool stuff coming. Hope you guys appreciate it. But uh, Andy, I think that's going to do it for this evening. 
But uh, for folks, again, no live next week, but we'll see you Tuesday morning for the Tyler. Oh, God. I'm already, I'm all over the place, man. For the Chris Lane show. <laughs> Chris Lane show. Yes. The Chris Lane show. We'll see I'm you all guys over the place. Too. Yeah. Have a good one. Peace. <laughs>